Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome. I'd like to take you on a journey uh, showing you the process of painting a 30 by 40 acrylic painting. Uh, this is a commissioned work, and it is an illustration of Moses, Aaron, and Hur uh, in the Amalekite battle as recorded in the Old Testament in the Bible. Um, they were facing a really strong army that had the potential to completely devastate their army and God had commanded Moses to lift up his staff and as long as his staff was upraised the power of God would flow and the battle would turn out decisively in favor of the Israelites. Um, however what happened over time was he grew weary as he was lifting up the staff because the battle went on for hours and eventually he started to, to falter and he couldn't raise the staff up anymore and then the Israelites started to struggle in the battle. So Mo Moses uh, was helped out by Aaron and Hur at either side of him. And Aaron and Hur um, had him sit on a big stone and they propped up his arms on either side so he could hold that staff up and keep it upraised. And it's a, it's a beautiful picture of intercessory prayer. Sometimes when we pray we lack the faith to be able to receive the thing we're we're aiming for the thing that God has promised us and over time we can get weary in the battle, weary just from daily struggles and doubts internally and we need somebody to come alongside of us and, and strengthen us in our faith and, and pray along with us. And so that's what this painting is actually a, a picture of. It's uh, that intercessory prayer, um, the, the, the idea of not giving up, of persevering and I wanted to really show the intensity um, on their faces and the, the struggle um, in the prayer, in the battle, but they're going to come out through to victory. So I'd like to take you on a journey here as I paint this portrait. What I'd like to do is start to block in the value structure, the color structure. I have everything sketched, I have everything sealed in so it's ready to go. Um, but before I begin painting, I'm going to open up with a word of prayer. So Father, I do ask that you would bless <clears throat> this, this painting here. Lord, I pray that you would help it <clears throat> to be a picture of intercessory prayer, that it would encourage people who are going through struggles and trials, and it would encourage people to come alongside and, and pray um, and intercede and help others with their prayers. Lord, I pray you bless this painting. I pray you'd anoint it. I pray that you would guide every brush stroke. Lord, I pray you just um, imbue and inject a sense of your Holy Spirit into this painting to glorify the name of Jesus, to glorify and lift up that idea of prayer to you, of depending upon you, receiving strength from you, Lord. Bless this painting. Bless the artists watching this. <clears throat> I pray you would bless them in their own paintings, uh, that you would encourage them, strengthen them if they're feeling weak, if they're having any physical um, ailments as they paint. I pray you'd heal them in the name of Jesus. Heal them, Lord, even as they're watching this. Uh, let the healing power of Jesus flow out into their bodies and um, take away any shoulder pains, Lord, any back pains, any pains in their fingers and their wrists, that they would have arthritis freed up in the name of Jesus. They'd be able to paint with freedom, with joy. Lord, I pray if there's any internal struggles with artists, just feelings of, of insecurity or doubt that they can't do this, Lord, that you would strengthen them with confidence, knowing that they, if they have the desire to paint, that you put that desire in them, and you'll also supply the ability, the training to be able to do it well. It would glorify, uh, bless others, encourage others, beautify the world. Lord, I pray that you would bless the artists watching us. I pray that what I teach here would be beneficial for them in enabling them uh, to paint with precision um, and with confidence, and they can paint portraits and images they can be proud of that would bring glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, and with that, we're going to dive in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is start with some matte medium on my palette. So we're just going to apply the matte medium here right in the middle of the palette. And I've got all my colors laid out. This is the traditional palette here. Raw Umber Dark, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Pyro Red Orange, 
Indian yellow, and titanium white. So uh, we have all these colors laid out here. And then with that, um, I'm going to get going here. I'm going to get started. So I'm going to take a flat edge brush here. I might have to go with one that's just a little bit larger. No, we'll, we'll go with this uh, three quarter inch flat. And I'm going to just block in the value structure here. Um, so what I'm going to do is block in um, these dark shadows here within the shape of, of Aaron. And then we have her over here. He's wearing a lighter colored garment. Um, and then I'm going to block in the shadow structure here for Moses as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to also block in the shadow structure for the rocks. So the goal in uh, a painting where we do this with the glazing technique, I'm using the uh, historical glazing technique that the old masters used, adapted for acrylics. Um, with this technique, we mix matte medium into the pigments, dispersing the concentrated color of the pigments into clear acrylic without any pigment uh, into it. And then that creates luminosity and depth and the ability to blend and get smooth transitions of value and color. Um, but what we want to do in this stage is really block in <clears throat> the value structure. And we, we see this kind of as, as a Polaroid print, so to speak, fading from a sketch into a finished painting. We're going to work on the whole thing, not just paint little details, um, you know, at a finished level and work our way out and have a lot of white canvas to intimidate us. And we're going to work everything at once and kind of see the whole image come together. So, um, setting up the foundation here, I'm going to take raw or dark, just a little bit of that. I put it on the corner of my brush. <clears throat> And I'm going to wipe it off on the side here. You can see that. And then I'm going to mix it into the matte medium. And swirl it in really well. We want to start off very, very light. Very, very light. Um, and I'm going to mix also some ultramarine blue into this as well. So we're going to make kind of a... Uh, grayish tint. So when you mix the blue and the brown together it makes uh, kind of a cooler brown or a slightly warm gray. And then with that I want this uh, to be pretty light. We're looking at maybe you know 90 percent paint or sorry 90 percent medium rather 90 percent medium 10 percent paint or even 95% medium, 5% paint. And I'm just swirling it and getting a really good mix. That's very important to get a good mixture because if you don't mix it thoroughly, that's where you have streaks as you apply it. So what we're going to do is look for the dominant shapes um, and work our way out from that. I'm going to, I think, start with the foreground in this case. I know normally people start with the background, but that's not how I paint using the acrylic glazing technique. Rather, we work everything kind of at the same time. Um, so we don't need to layer it like a traditional opaque uh, painting technique. But uh, what I want to do here is just start blocking in some forms. And I'm going to go over the rocks first. And I'm going to kind of work my way over um, into the form of uh, Aaron, this large figure in the front. Now, on my sketch, I have some areas kind of delineated what should be shadow and what should be um, highlighted. Hopefully, I can see that okay. And I'm just following that as, as best as I can. So I'm going over those areas that I kind of shaded in using a, a dark brown colored pencil. Now we're going to fill this in 
all these little areas and again I'm starting off very light and that allows me the ability to adjust if I make an error let's say I block in the shadows for one of the rocks here and I think oh man that is not where I wanted it to be I can always change that and notice how I'm also going over um, the legs I'm considering them as a dark value I'm not treating it differently even though I know there's skin tones involved because the value is quite dark in this area I'm treating it all as part of this value structure I'm also going to work um, on the clothing and start blocking in the contrast there and we're just going to work our way up into the form so now I'm letting my brush strokes go in several different directions to smooth it out and keeping a wet edge I'm going to reload my brush and then I'm going to kind of go into the edge I left and make sure that it's not setting up so it's just like house painting you keep that wet edge flip the brush over grab some more paint the idea is to really have a lot of paint on your brush and work it into the texture of the canvas quite a bit. So we're going to cut up along the edge using a firm amount of pressure. And again, I'm doing some different brush strokes, diagonal in both directions, and kind of smooth it out with some vertical strokes. And you get a feel for when the paint is starting to set up, when the glaze is starting to get a little bit tacky, and you leave it alone and don't overwork it. <clears throat> but this way we can get a nice even coverage. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to put this glaze onto the white head covering. Um, because that needs to be more bluish. It's going to reflect some color from the sky and so I need to use straight ultramarine blue for that. Might even need to put some phthalo blue on my palette. It's not a standard color that I use but it might be necessary. Okay, now we're going to get a shadow here um, for Moses and we're just going to block that in using this same large brush. Oh, and I need to get this little area here around his arm. That little bit of clothing just to the right of the headdress there. Okay, now I'm blocking in this whole section here of his arm. going over his clothing um, there's a there's some wrinkles on his clothing I want to achieve that that in very lightly this lower part here of his clothing I need to get that form in because the light is striking it on the top his hair I can block that in as well just to get some of the lighting structure And then I'm going to block in some of the colors here for uh, her and what he's wearing. And that's not her as an H E R, that's H U R, just happens to sound like her. Um, anyway, you're going to just block this in right here. 
I'm going to zoom in so you can see kind of the process, how that works. So you're just barely seeing the difference here in this glaze. It starts off very, very light. I work a little bit into the chest area on this underside on his legs. That should get darker too. But notice where I'm cutting up along the edges of the areas that I delineated on the sketch. As you can see right along here, these edges I created in my sketch and so that gives me the value structure and I filled in around that on this whole darker area. And so then what that does is it creates immediate contrast right here for the highlighted areas and I can work out of that and build onto that. I'm going to also add that little glaze right here on the interior. <coughs> Okay, now we're going to continue some glazes along on the rocky areas. We'll just zoom out again. Just going to add some glazes uh, below this area where, where Moses is sitting. If you, ever, if you remember the Ten Commandments movie, that's what this should remind you of. If you've seen that with Charleston Heston, um, just kind of recapturing that scene. Okay, so we have some rocky patterns here. There are a few little highlights, though, that I need to make sure stay visible. this in, fill this whole area in on this side, reload my brush, and all these little rocky areas I just want to fill those in. So I'm just basically following the areas that I have from my sketch that are a little bit lighter and then darker. Might not be exactly like the photo, but it should be close. some rocks up on the hill. I want to get those blocked in as well. Just a little patterns there for that. All right. I'm going to stop off in the video here. I just want to show you this initial process. And there'll be some more blocking in work to do. You know, I'll need to also block in his staff and then the background as well. But I want to do that in a future video. I just want to show you the process here, um, how to begin your acrylic painting um, and block in those values, get that structure defined so you can build on top of it. Well, hey, if you're watching this video on YouTube, uh, when I record these, I'm not sure how many of them I'll put on YouTube. Um, and how many of them will go into realistic acrylic portrait school. But if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Uh, by giving it a thumbs up, you help others to see it across YouTube. And uh, by subscribing, you'll be sure to see my latest videos when they come out. Um, 
at realisticacrylic.com. I have more tutorials there covering a wide variety of topics on acrylic portrait painting. So be sure to check that out, uh, realisticacrylic.com. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We're going to continue this process. I'll be showing more. So uh, God bless, and we'll see you in a future video. Take care.